Now, what do we have in front of us here? Well, MetaTrader 4 can be broken down visually into separate segments. So first off at the top here, we've got a control ribbon where you've got the file, view, insert, charts, tools, window, help. From this uh, ribbon, you can do virtually anything in MetaTrader 4. Next, we've got the toolbar over here. And for now, we'll just click this button over here to arrange our windows. And as you can see, they arrange very nicely like that. Um, what else do we have? So we've got the time frames here. We've got some markup tools. Next on the left here, we've got the market watch window. And so I'm going to expand this window over here. Let me do that again. So I'm going to expand that maybe a bit more. And once again, I'm just going to click that button so they tile nicely. Um, so the market watch, what it does it is it has all the currency pairs doesn't necessarily have all the ones that are available to you right now and I'll show you how to fix that up but it's got some of the currency pairs and some of the instruments that you can trade and as you can see it's quite a long list it even has like gold here and uh, silver and some some other uh, instruments that you are uh, possibly can trade and it's got uh, some information about them so it's got the bid the ask price um, and basically you can use this uh, market watch to quickly open a new charts if you like and let's go ahead and do that now so let's say we want to look at Australian dollar New Zealand dollar and we'll just go right click so that was a right click and we go chart window and there we go I just opened up a, a new chart um, so we'll leave it there for now uh, next we've got the navigator window up, uh, down at the bottom here and the navigator window allows you to uh, first of all, look at your accounts. So if you have multiple accounts in one trading terminal, you can switch between them using the Navigator window. So you can see that's my account over there, Carol Um And then we've got the indicators. So we'll talk about indicators. We'll have a separate section about indicators and I will tell you what they're there for. But basically, if you want to add indicators to your chart, this is one of the ways you can do it. It's, uh, it's very visual and very nicely formatted. So kind of like folder style. So you have a, a folder, which is indicators, and you've got subfolders in here as well. You've got uh, expert advisors or scripts, and we'll be talking about all of those in their respective section. And then down here at the bottom, you've got the terminal window. So over here on the left, it says terminal. And this window is predominantly used to get information about your trading terminal. So the open orders, the closed orders, your exposure, uh, any journals and so on. Also, there's another, another window which you cannot see right now. And if we click this button here, strategy tester, uh, you'll see it'll pop up. So this is another window tester. And this is for tra testing automated trading strategies. But we won't be talking about this. I have uh, a separate course on uh, automated uh, trading strategies. So we'll just close this window. I just wanted to show you that it is there if you want to bring it up. All right. And then finally, most importantly, we've got the main part of MetaTrader 4. This is your workspace. This is where your charts are. So I can double click this chart to uh, expand it. And that is how you would normally probably look at a currency pair. So you're not distracted by other charts. At the same time, as we know, you can click this tile window and it will be nicely tiled there for you. And uh, yeah, then once again, you can switch between the charts. So if you have it in full screen mode, you can switch between the charts over here. You will have the separate tabs. So don't worry, they haven't disappeared. You can very quickly switch between your charts. Okay, so now that we know how Forex charts work and the three different types, let's see how we can use them in MetaTrader 4. So we're going to open up a new chart and we're going to open up one of my favorite currency pairs, the Euro Canadian dollar currency pair. So let's right click and select a chart window. And now I'm going to expand this window so that it covers this whole uh, workspace. And in fact, I'm going to close the terminal um, window because uh, that will give us some more space for the chart. And now what we can do is we can change the chart type uh, between bars and candlesticks and line chart. So first thing you will notice is that um, the chart is quite small, so it's we're quite far away. So let's go ahead and zoom in. To zoom in, click this plus button over here. Zoom in, let's zoom in a couple of times. There you go, so that's your chart. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to change the type of the chart. Right now it's a uh, bar chart, so just a standard bar chart. Now we want to change it to a candlestick and we're going to press this button over here to change it to a candlestick chart. 
there you go. Now we have a candlestick chart. As you can see, it looks different. So I'm going to zoom in one more time. And if you want to move your chart around, then you can just click left click the mouse and move it around. Uh, but we're not going to do that right now. We're focusing on the uh, how the chart looks. So that is a candlestick chart. And and now I can switch it back to uh, standard bar charts. There we go. And also we can look at a line chart. So once again, this one has way less information, only has the closed prices. Uh, although you can get all the information if you put your mouse over a certain um, segment of the line. Uh, but uh, so this kind of this chart is good if you just want an overall picture. But generally, traders don't use the line chart. Generally, they stick to the uh, candle chart or the bar chart. And that's how you use the three types of charts in MetaTrader 4. All right, so let's open up a new chart because we're kind of getting a bit tired of this one. And let's say, what do we want? What do we want? Um, uh, let's say we want to look at the dollar swiss franc for a change and right click chart window so there we go that's our dollar swiss franc chart and as you can see by default i'm actually going to press this uh, chart shift button so by default you can see that that one hourly time frame has been opened and that happens when you open up a new chart so what is a one hourly time frame if i zoom in now and if i let's say change these two candles you will see that Every single candle here is a new hour. So if I put my mouse over this candle, uh, you'll see that here it's 2015, 10th, 26th, or 26th of October, 12 o'clock. Here it's uh, 13, so one o'clock. Here it's 14. So every single bar represents a new hour. And as we discussed in one of the previous tutorials, these bars, the way they're formed, or these candles, the way they're formed is, uh, you've got your open price, so what at what price did this candle open, uh, or what at what price did this hour open, what price did this hour close, what was the minimum, what was the maximum within that hour. So inside this hour, there's a lot of movement of the currency pair, but it's all aggregated into this one bar. Now, that might not be enough for your analysis, and you might actually want more information on how exactly did the currency pair move. And in that case, you want to move or you want to change this chart to a, a bit more granular chart. So a chart that is not broken down into one hourly um, sections or one hourly candles, but one that is broken down into 30 minute candles. So let's go ahead and see how that will work out. I'm going to uh, press this button over here. And now, as you can see, this is the same currency pair, but the chart looks totally different. Well, that is because now instead of seeing um, a candle for every hour, we see a candle for every 30 minutes. I wanted to show you how you would use two, two time frames together. So let's say you're trading, um, you're trading on the one hourly time frame, which is this one. What you might want to do is, I'm just going to minimize this window or make it smaller. What you might want to do is, in parallel to your one hourly time frame, you might want to have a higher time frame. So let's say you might want to have your a daily time frame, which is this one. And what this will show you is it can show you the overall trend. Whoops, let me zoom in a bit more. So this can show you the overall trend. So here you can see that the overall trend in the daily chart. Um, it's kind of like it's in a zigzag movement or a sideway movement. And that way that can help you analyze the hourly time frame. So if you're trading this chart, you just don't want to trade it against the trend. And this can help you uh, give you some insights into that. or in the contra on the contrary, you might want the smaller time frame here. So say a 15 minute time frame so that you're thinking, okay, I'm going to enter a buy order here because it looks like it's going up. I'm going to enter a buy order. And this uh, smaller time frame chart will allow you to make your entry more precise. And you will see, okay, so this chart confirms that it looks like it is going to go up and I'm going to use this chart to uh, assist my decision that I'm making on this chart. And so that is how you would potentially use two charts at the same time, two time frames at the same time. And but the most important is how to switch time frames. You just use these buttons over here to control your chart. All right, so we've got a chart here and how have we been 
extracting information from this chart so far. So first of all, visually, right, we can see it's going up and then it's flattening out. Um, then I can zoom in and what can I see here? So I can kind of like visually see what price is over here, what price is over there. Uh, I can visually uh, try to assess the time. So this looks like 245. A good way is always to put your mouse over, um, over the bar. So once I put my mouse over the bar, a pop-up appears and it tells me exactly the time, open, high, low, and close, and even volume. Um, also, what uh, we want is, we kind of want to be more agile, right? So uh, just putting the mouse over every single bar, that takes time and waiting for this pop-up. It's, it's not that visual, it's not that quick. So there's a tool in Mentor 4 that allows you to very quickly assess um, any bar and get any information that you want, and that is a crosshair. So if you go to the left over here, you'll see next to the mouse there's this crosshair symbol. Um, and if you just click it, and then you put your mouse back on the bar, it's no longer a mouse, it's a crosshair. And this is a very convenient tool because, um, as you can see here, when I'm putting um, the crosshair on any part of the chart, it's telling me the exact price and it's telling me the exact time of uh, that bar. So, uh, for instance, this bar, uh, I can tell right away, it's a 245 bar, right? So the open price, I can tell where the open price is visually, and then I put my crosshair over it, I can tell that the open price was about 0 0.98287, um, the closed price was uh, 0 0.98255, what does this tell us? Okay, so I was pretty close, so here it says 0 0.98254, and also I can see the low over here. So a very convenient tool and then you just uh, click on the other chart. So if you want the crosshair for this chart, you need to go and click it again and that gives you the crosshair here. Um, so if you want to switch back to the mouse, you just click the mouse and click the mouse here. So click on the chart, click the mouse and now you don't have crosshairs. This is our candlestick chart and we've removed the grid. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is the auto scroll and chart shape. So what you will notice if, is if I want to go to the left in this uh, chart, if I want to go to the left as uh, scroll, you will see that it like it lets me scroll and then if I don't do anything, it pops back to the start. So then I go and then it keeps it keeps me like it's like a magnet. It keeps going back to the start and I can't do anything about it. Like I'm, I'm looking at these bars of 16 October, I'm analyzing them and bam, all of a sudden I'm back here. Well, that is because we've got the auto scroll on. And what the auto scroll does is as soon as a new tick appears in the ch um, in your chart, so as soon as more information is added to your chart, it automatically brings you to uh, the starting position or to this um, the, to the current bar which has been formed over here. And that can be useful sometimes if you if you're observing a low time frame and it's uh, uh, happening very quickly and you just want the chart to constantly uh, be updating this part of the chart, so this right part of the chart. Uh, but sometimes it's not useful, especially if you want to look at the history, it can be distracting. So in order to switch off the auto scroll, all you have to do is click this green button over here and um, just uh, click it, left click it, and that way it's not on anymore and you can safely scroll back through the history. So just left click the chart and move your mouse to the right. It will move your uh, chart to the left. And as you can see, uh, we're not being moved back to the beginning of the chart or to the current bar anymore. So that's how the auto scroll works. You can always just switch it on very simply, just click it. And as you can see, we're back here right away. The other one that I wanted to show you is the chart shift. So this red button over here, um, as you can see, there isn't any space here. So like, the bulk of the area is filled up with historical bars right now. And in order to see what's going on right now at the moment on the market, we have to uh, look way to the right of the chart. Sometimes it's not very convenient. So we want this bar to be over here. So we want some like a gap, some blank space on the right of the chart. And in order to achieve that, all you have to do is click this button, uh, which is the shift buttons, like a little red arrow. Once you click it, as you can see, some space appears to the right and that allows you um, to better position this final bar so that you don't have to move your eyes all the way to the right you can comfortably analyze everything more closer to the center of your screen and also what you'll find at the top is this little triangle and actually um, some traders 
don't know about this and uh, it takes a while to to figure out what this triangle is for uh, but um, here here we go so what this triangle allows you to do is to control the size of the space so if you want more space you move the triangle to the left you can move it way to the center of your screen and that way um, this bar is positioned exactly in the center of your laptop or your screen and that way it's very convenient to analyze uh, let's switch to a um, a candlestick for a change or you can position it uh, back here so that you have a small space on the right so I usually keep it somewhere there and if you don't want to see your shift anymore can you just unclick this button and there you go the shift is gone here in front of us we have eight forex charts they're all different some of them are for different currency pairs some of them are for different time frames some of them have different levels of zoom and some have different indicators placed on them but most importantly, all of them have different color schemes. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. Today, I will show you how to customize your chart. Now, we're going to focus on this chart over here. So let's go ahead and expand it by clicking the button up at the top in the middle. And in order to change the style of your chart, you need to right click and go into properties. Now, here you have two tabs. You've got the colors tab and you've got the common tab. We're going to focus on the colors tab for now. Here you have three predefined schemes. You've got the yellow and black, which will basically change the green to a black. Uh, you've got the green and black, which we just saw, and you've got the black on white, uh, which we've also worked with before. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up a scheme that personally I find very um, nice to look at. I find it not uh, distracting. I don't find it too aggressive. But at the same time, if that's not the scheme that you like, then feel free to set up your own colors as you think you'll prefer. And we're going to start off with the background. So the background, first of all, of course, you've got to take into account your own color preferences, but also I recommend taking into account things like what time of day you're going to be uh, working with your charts most of the time. Um, what is it? Is it dark in the room you're sitting in? Is it a light in the room you're sitting in? Is there reflection coming off your chart? And so on. So things like that, that will uh, basically make your chart visible and easy to work with in the time of day and in the environment that you're uh, performing your MetaTrader 4 work in. So here you just need to click the drop down. You can select any color and as you can see this um, window adjusts for you and it shows you the preview. So I've got my uh, personal preference over here, there's a color called Gainsborough, and if I select that, it's kind of like a uh, light grayish. Um, then foreground is the text over here on the axes and basically all of the information on your chart. So uh, sometimes black works fine, but if you select a dark background, then black won't work fine and you might wanna select a different color. So you can select like a blue, but in this case, blue doesn't work at all. You can select a red, a white, and so, so white is, uh, quite often used like as you can see here right now white is used on this chart um, in this case I'm going to leave it on black next the grid so the grid is that uh, those lines in the background and uh, personally I like to switch them off so it doesn't really matter what grid we select but in this case let's for instance select a snow color grid um, and here's the fun part so the bar up bar down bull candle bear candle and line graph so your bar up is basically the outline of a bar or of a candle going up or if you're working with uh, standard bars then it's just the color of the bar and here I'm going to select dark gray so that color over there for the bar down I'm actually also going to select dark gray and I'll explain why in a second for the bull candle I'm going to select dark gray for the bear candle I'm going to select the next color down which is light salmon and uh, for a line graph, I'm just going to select dark gray. So a lot of people forget about this, but the line graph actually is responsible for your dodgies. So if um, I select changes to red, right now on this preview, you can't see uh, any example of that, but basically uh, it's, it's lines that don't have, it's uh, candles that don't have a body. So when the open e equals to the close price, then that um, uh, the color of that candle will be line graph or this is also responsible for the color of the line graph that you have uh, on your charts um, so this one we're also going to say dark gray and the rest the rest we're going to leave it as is and if i click ok um, now if i take off the grid and then i zoom in a bit you'll see that it's at this level of zoom it's actually quite a pleasant color mix 
And that's how you set up your uh, chart to your personal preference. Let's um, make this smaller so it fits back inside our uh, charts. And there you go. You saw how easy it is, how quick it is to set up your chart. And once again, there are many, 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 many different types of color schemes that you can select from and you can. And personally, I think you totally should tailor your experience to what you're interested in. We have lots of different types of charts here, lots of different color schemes. Now, what happens if we want to open up a new chart, right? So um, if I go and I say, I would like to look at, for instance, the Euro dollar chart. So I right click and I say chart window and I've got a new window here. Well, how do I now apply this same color scheme that I had here, for instance, to this chart? Do I really have to go through the tedious process of going into properties and selecting all the correct colors? Well, the answer is no. In MetaTrader 4, there are things called templates and templates actually allow you to save your color schemes that you've selected into pre-configured files and then you can load them up onto new charts. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. In order to create a template, uh, we're going to right click onto the chart where we've already selected our color scheme and we're going to go to template. And here we're going to just simply click save template. In a save template, we're going to give our template a name. As you can see, there are some templates over here which come pre-packaged with MetaTrader 4. Um, this one, for instance, I'm going to say gray a favorite because it is my favorite template or the one I like the most in terms of the color scheme. So I've given a name and now I just have to click save. Now I can right click on this chart and go to templates and I can select load template. And once the template has been loaded, oh, once this window has been loaded, I just need to find my template. There it is, gray favorite and open up. And as you can see, automatically it has, the chart has been adjusted. So um, the time frame, time frame of the chart hasn't changed, but everything else has. So um, the colors, the zoom, so I can zoom out now and I can see uh, my chart again, the types of bars that are being used. They're not bars anymore, they're candlesticks. And so that is how you use a template. Now, the best part is that I can build on top of templates. So I can have this as my base template. And let's say, for instance, I would like to see this uh, indicator or this um, control panel on this chart as well. So I would like to see the one-click trading. So I just right-click, I select one-click trading. Now it's it has appeared and now I can save this template again. I can go and say template, save template, and I can say gray favorite and I'll say with uh, one-click uh, trading. So uh, probably OCT doesn't, uh, with one-click there we go. So if I save that and now I open another chart, say, let's say your dollar again. And let's say, for instance, I want to change it to um, an M5 chart. So somewhere where I have to trade very quickly. And here I will go and load up the template. And uh, you can see that it's appeared here as well. So I can just select it from here. And as you can see right away, I've got this one click trading available to me. And that is a very convenient way of saving your preferences of charts and moving them around. Also, you can add indicators, just like we added this control panel. If you add an indicator to a chart and you would like it to appear with the template, you can save that as well. So it gives you a lot, a lot of flexibility in terms of uh, how uh, you use MetaTrader 4 and how you adapt the different charts that you're working with to the different templates that you have. And you can have multiple templates, say you could have templates for um, currency, for, for every single currency or for different uh, time frames or uh, for different uh, types of currencies. So you could say have uh, templates for Euro currencies, you could have templates for British pound currencies and that, that would help you, uh, poss possibly that could help you navigate the terminal better. So there we go, that's how you work with templates. I uh, hope this tutorial was useful and I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, happy trading.